Well, Andy is a singer in a famous band called Lovely Love. Lovely name, isn't it? He has just received fantastic news from his producer. They're going to have an epic tour around the country. So Andy called all his friends and threw a party to celebrate. Can you tell how many people are in the band? And can you also find all the band members among the guests? Although the room is full of musicians, lovely love consists of only three people. Take a look at this poster on the wall. There's a photo of Andy, Jessica, who's standing over there, and Bill, he's sitting on the couch. In the middle of the party, Andy's fan came over and asked for an autograph. She also asked Andy a question. What was your dream job when you were younger? Instead of giving her the autograph, Andy drew this rebus and said, If you want to learn this secret, you have to crack my rebus. Ooh, sounds like it could hurt. Can you help the girl? When he was younger, Andy had a dream of becoming a scientist. Jessica saw this rebus and drew her own. Can you guess her dream job? That's right, she wanted to become a firefighter. And Bill coded his dream job in this rebus. Can you crack it? It's a mechanic. Next day, the band members gathered at a rehearsal studio. Can you tell who plays which instrument? Bill has a tattoo with a guitar on his shoulder, but this doesn't prove that he plays this instrument. In fact, he plays the piano. Take a look at this synthesizer. It has Bill's name written on it. Andy plays the guitar. There's a guitar case behind his back. And Jessica plays drums. She has drumsticks in her hair. Some fans sent Jessica flowers. She put them on a table and went to the bathroom to fill a vase with water. One of the guys decided to prank her. He sprinkled dry food coloring on the flowers. When Jessica returned, she put the bouquet in the vase and sniffed the flowers. Oh, no. Her face immediately turned purple. Can you tell who's responsible for this prank? Bill or Andy? Andy. There's some purple paint on his sleeve. The guys got hungry and asked their producer, James, to go get some snacks. In the kitchen, James found the ingredients for something really special – chocolate-covered bananas. While cooking, James noticed a jar with pickles and decided to prank the guys. He shoved small sticks into pickles, gave them a nice chocolate bath, and covered them in sprinkles. Then James served the dessert on a tray. Bill was about to take a bite, but Jessica shouted, Wait! This is a prank! How did she guess? All the bananas are curved, while the pickles are suspiciously straight. Finally, the guys put all their stuff inside a trailer and hit the road. Soon, they arrived at the first spot, a big music festival. But the guard at the entrance didn't want to let them in. He asked the musicians to solve his riddle. I am so delicate that just saying my name will cause me to break. What am I? Can you guess? It's silence. Then five volunteers came up to the guys. There were four stages at this festival. Each volunteer was responsible for one of the stages. This means one of the volunteers was fake. Ooh. This lady over there. She's a ghost. She's levitating and doesn't cast a shadow. Ooh. The volunteers offered the guys two trays with delicious snacks. Can you spot any differences between these trays?
Here they are. There was only one minute left before the performance. The guys took their instruments and got ready to go to the stage. But suddenly, they realized that the door was locked. They were stuck inside the dressing room. Andy found this note next to the door. He didn't waste a second and cracked the code. They made it to the stage on time. What was the code? The wall stands for 3411, and Samson is 543502. Jessica left her stuff in the dressing room. When she returned, she saw that someone had stolen oh, no. her backpack. The manager called the police and locked the doors. A police officer arrived and detained three suspects. The manicurist said that she had been focused on her work. The cleaner said he had been mopping the hallway and hadn't noticed anyone suspicious. And the hairdresser was too busy taking pictures for her Instagram account. Have you guessed who the thief is? The manicurist. Look at the color of her nail polish. The festival manager arranged an after-party and invited the guys to join. The dance floor was full of famous musicians. Andy noticed his idol, Stan, and came up to ask for an autograph. Suddenly, Stan fainted in the middle of the room. Someone had poisoned him. The police questioned three suspects. Bill said, I was talking to Kitty. She's a journalist. Kitty said, Stan and I have been best friends for ages, and I would never hurt him. And Melanie said, I was eating my dinner when Stan got sick. I didn't see anything suspicious. Can you guess who's lying? Kitty, take a look at her bag. She has ruined Stan's portrait on the cover of this magazine. If he were really her friend, why would she do that? In the morning, the musicians went to the next city. On the road, they saw a guy with a cart. A minute later, they noticed another one. Bill said, wow, these guys are identical. But Andy noticed two differences. Jessica, in turn, found three differences. Who was right? Jessica. These are the differences between the men. Sometime later, the guys saw a couple of hitchhikers on the side of the road. And in five minutes, they saw a similar couple. Andy noticed one difference. Bill said there were two differences. And Jessica noticed three differences. Who was right? Bill. This guy's backpack is different and the ladies' sneakers differ slightly as well. Finally, the band arrived at their next destination. They noticed a beautiful house on the right side of the road. Suddenly, Jessica pointed at the left side of the road. Look, this house is absolutely the same! But Bill noticed three differences. Andy was sure that the houses had two differences. Who is right? Andy. Andy was looking around the town's concert hall when someone locked the door. Andy had three ways out, but all of them were dangerous. The first passage was so hot it was impossible to get through. The second passage was freezing, literally. The third passage was guarded by a robot vacuum that was reprogrammed to hunt down humans. What passage should Andy choose? The third passage. The robot might start hunting him, but it's just a cleaner robot. What harm can it cause? Jessica wanted to get into the rehearsal studio, but the door was locked. A note on the wall gave Jessica a hint. Jessica was very smart, so she cracked the puzzle very quickly and unlocked the door. What was the code? Multiply the first and the last number, then multiply the second and third. The code is 2516. After giving an epic concert, the guys finally went backstage to eat. 
the catering service had prepared two identical tables full of delicious dishes. Can you spot four differences between these two tables? Here they are. The guys rented a cozy apartment for one night. Bill was nagging all the way there, which annoyed Andy and Jessica. So they decided to teach Bill a lesson. They dropped the key to his bedroom into a bucket of water. His task was to get the key out without touching the water or using any tools. And still, that night, Bill slept in his bedroom. How did he get the key? He placed the bucket over a fire. Soon, the water boiled away and Bill took the key out, hopefully letting it cool first. Ow! In the morning, the guys hit the road again and reached the next city very quickly. The concert manager took them to a rehearsal studio. They saw a crowd of fans near the entrance. Everyone wanted to get an autograph. There were not only humans. Can you spot zombies among these fans? That's right, there are three zombies in the crowd. This guy and this lady over there are pretty obvious. But this guy hiding on the tree is also a zombie. Look at his feet. During the performance, it suddenly got very dark. Someone turned off the lights in the entire building. The police questioned the suspects. The cleaning lady said she had been sitting in her office quietly, talking on the phone with her family. The electrician said, I was in the bathroom on the third floor when it happened. The concert manager said, This is a huge money loss for me. Why would I do it? Who is lying? The electrician. Look at the wall. He's indeed on the third floor. But there's a sign on the toilet door. It's closed for renovation for two weeks. Andy got lost backstage. He found four doors that led out of the concert hall. But all four passages look suspicious. A hungry monster was hiding behind the first door. A fire was burning behind the second door. The third passage was full of poisonous gas. And there was a room without any windows behind the fourth door. Can Andy get out of the concert hall? He can go through the fourth door. There are no windows there. But no one said it didn't have a door. After the last concert, Andy finally got the courage to invite Jessica on a date. She came to his place and they watched a movie. Then they had a long conversation. Jessica told Andy a lot about her past and about her future plans. Andy went to the kitchen to prepare some snacks. When he returned to the living room, he saw two identical women. Both of them claimed to be the real Jessica. How did Andy understand who his girlfriend is? He should ask each of them what they've been chatting about earlier. Look at the picture very attentively. Can you tell which prisoner is rich? The first one is sewing something. She must be working as a seamstress. She probably isn't that rich. The second one has some pieces of jewelry. But in the second place where the prisoners are, the golden chains don't mean much. The third one is reading quietly and doesn't cause any trouble. That's a rich person's behavior. They usually don't want to attract attention, especially in jail. It was November, but Jasmine already had some bad grades at school. So, her mother, Mrs. Lawrence, grounded her until Jasmine improved her grades. Mrs. Lawrence worked night shifts and had to leave for work. One day, when she returned home, she realized that Jasmine had sneaked out at night to go to a party. How did Mrs. Lawrence understand it? It's fall. The car is parked right under the tree. But unlike their neighbor's cars, it's not covered in leaves. 
It means Jasmine had just returned home after the night party. Vienna was wandering in a forest and came across a huge and spooky mansion. When she walked in, the door behind her back got locked. It was an old magician's house. He didn't like when strangers visited his mansion. Soon, Vienna saw three drinks on the table. The yellow one would allow the girl to live for a month without water or food. The purple one would make her the size of an index finger for an hour. The blue one would give her a lion's strength for half an hour. Which one should she drink? The purple drink. She'll become small and she'll be able to escape through that little cat door. Esme was walking in the forest, but she got lost. Soon, the girl found the witch's house, entered it, petted the cat, and asked if the witch could send her home. The witch had just gotten a new laptop and a three-digit password. She asked Esme to figure out what it was. Esme made four guesses. 357, 902, 907, 954. Obviously, she didn't get it right. The witch gave her a hint. Each of Esme's guesses had one correct digit, and it was exactly in the right place. What's the password? The first digit can't be 9, so it's 3. Then, the second and third digits can't be 5 and 7, so the second digit must be 0, and the third one is 4, which means the code is 304. Sailor and Evie were best friends who wanted to spend the winter vacation together. Unfortunately, Sailor's grandmother fell ill, and she had to go to another city to be with her. Evie was missing her friend. Once, she was walking past her empty house. Soon, Evie realized that Sailor had lied to her about the grandma and was actually at home. How did Evie understand it? Look, it's been snowing that day, but there's no snow near Sailor's house. It means that Sailor must be there. Mrs. Rivera was a math teacher grading her students' homework. Halfway through, she came across two similar homework sheets. The woman realized that one of the students had copied the work of the other because the mistakes were the same. The sheet on the right is McKenna's, and the left one belongs to Maeve. Can you tell who copied the other's homework? Look, McKenna corrected herself a couple of times. While well, Maeve's work is exceptionally neat, except for the mistakes. Mrs. Rivera corrected. This means that McKenna was doing her homework by herself, occasionally making typos and mistakes. And Maeve's paper is neat because she just copied McKenna's work. One day, Mrs. York invited some guests to a fancy dinner in her mansion. A couple of teenagers were running around, exploring the house. When Mrs. York went to the basement, she saw that the showcase that contained her jewelry collection was broken. One girl, Hannah, admitted she'd thrown a baseball, and it had accidentally hit the showcase. But the showcase had already been damaged by that time. Can you tell if she's lying? The crack from the baseball must be the one on the right. If the baseball was the first thing to crack the glass, the cracks would stretch to the frame of the showcase, but they only reached the other cracks, which means that the baseball was, indeed, secondary damage. So Hannah told the truth. Mrs. Jones was working a night shift. Her daughter Venus wanted to invite a friend to sleep over, but Mrs. Jones didn't allow it because it was a school night. When she returned, she realized that the friend had actually visited Venus. How did she understand it? There are two sets of plates and cups in Venus's room. It means that she didn't spend the evening alone. Now, how about having more fun? 
I'll show you some emojis, and you'll have to guess an animated movie. Let's start with an easy one. Which animated movie is it? Yes, it's Sleeping Beauty. Okay, the next one. What's your guess? Of course, it's everyone's favorite, Up. What do you have to say about this one? Animals hanging out in the forest? It's bittersweet Bambi. Now, off to a girl's absolute obsession. Yes, that's frozen. Let it go. Let's make it a tiny bit harder for you. It's sweet Wally. -E. What about the next one? It's Ratatouille. Off to the next one. What's your guess? A movie about a crazy princess with a frying pan and a chameleon? The one and only Tangled. The next one is an oldie but a goodie. It's Monsters, Inc. What can you say about this one? Coco. I'm sure you'd love it if you watched it. Okay, a crazy one for you. Think about it. Joy, sadness, disgust, fear, and anger. That's inside out. And the last one's for you. Don't overthink. It's pretty simple. Yes, that's Toy Story. Dakota and Tatum both failed their math test. Their mother grounded them and made them study all weekend. She occasionally walked into the teenager's room to check on them. Take a look at the girls. Can you tell which one hadn't been studying before her mom walked in? It's Dakota, sitting on her bed, reading the math book. But there's no copy book or pen nearby. No one just reads math books. Math is more about writing and doing exercises. Just look at Tatum. Andromeda came to her PE class and told her teacher that, unfortunately, she couldn't participate in class because she had broken her arm. The teacher didn't believe her and told the girl to stop fooling around. Do you think Andromeda tells the truth? Why didn't the teacher believe her? Look, her cast is put over her hoodie. It must be fake. In the middle of the day, the lights in a jewelry store went off for a minute. Once the lights were back, the seller saw that the most expensive diamond had been stolen. There were three customers in the store at that time. Desmond, a blind man, said that he couldn't have stolen anything. Cassidy said that while the lights had been off, she'd been standing without moving. Kira said that she'd been trying to find her cell phone to turn on the flashlight. Who stole the diamond? Yeah. 
It must be Desmond. He pretends to be blind, but look, he has a camera. He wouldn't need it if he was really blind. Last week, Pandora went to a party without asking her dad for permission. Mr. Pond found out about this and grounded the girl for two weeks. There was another party planned for the next weekend, but Pandora had to stay in her room. The morning after the party, Mr. Pond came to his daughter's room and asked what she'd been doing the evening before. She said she'd been painting. Pandora got grounded for another month. Why? There are, indeed, painting supplies on her desk, but the picture is barely started. Mr. Pond realized that Pandora hadn't been painting for long because she had sneaked out and gone to the party. Another day, another incident. This time, another jewelry store was robbed. Two of the most expensive wedding rings were stolen. It happened after the store closed. So the main suspects were the cleaning man and security guard the only people who had the keys to the store. Detective Jane decided to visit both men, look at their houses and figure out who stole the rings. It must be the security guy. He obviously lives with a girlfriend and it seems like they want to get married. That's why he stole the rings. Michelle had a birthday party, and she invited several friends. Flora didn't want to go because she didn't like being around many people. So, she lied that her mom had grounded her and made her clean her room. The next day, she invited Michelle to her house to study together and watch a movie in the evening. Michelle agreed. But at Flora's house, she understood that her friend had lied to her. How? Flora's room is still messy. If she had cleaned it the day before, it'd be neat now. Three sisters, Serenity, Autumn, and Polaris, were at a party. They were offered to play a game. If they won, they'd get a good prize. There were five hats, three white ones and two blue ones. Each girl stood in line, one after another, and got one random hat. Serenity could see the colors of both her sisters' hats. Autumn could only see what Polaris was wearing, and Polaris couldn't see any of her sisters. Anyone could speak up and try to guess her hat's color, but it could only be one of the girls. If she got it right, they'd all win. After a while, Polaris guessed the color of her hat correctly. How did she do it? Both her if Serenity sue blue hats, she'd be but she didn't speak up. One of the hats she saw, Autumn realized that Oliver had a blue hat, which has a white one. But which means says Harris realized that and said, Okay, well, let's have a little warm up. How many characters do you see on the screen? Count each one. There are eight big ones, and I hope you notice two little ones over there. So, the answer is 10. Now, look at this picture and try to find the odd image. No, it's not my picture. Yes, it's right here. Another one for you. Pay attention. Look, here it is! Now, let's make it harder. Here's a picture of many animals. Can you find two that are exactly the same? Here's one, and here's the other. Can you find two emojis that look the same here? Look, here they are! 
I hope you're ready. Here's a riddle for you. Adley came to a cafe to study. She ordered a hot chocolate and a croissant. A croissant. She added a bit of sugar to her drink, started to drink it, and noticed there was a oh, fly no. in her cup. Adley asked the waiter to get a new cup of hot chocolate. One minute later, the waiter brought it to her. Adley took a sip and exclaimed, It's not a new drink, you just took the fly out. How did she understand it? Do you remember that Adley put some sugar in her hot chocolate? Well, the supposedly new drink was already sweet. Delilah went missing. The police had three suspects. The first one was her friend, Ellery, who was the last person spotted with Delilah. Ellery said they had gone shopping together, but afterwards, they both went home. Delilah's boyfriend, Walt, said the girl hadn't come home, and he assumed she stayed at Ellery's place. The last suspect was Delilah's father, who lived in another city. He said he didn't even know he had a daughter. Who should the police arrest? They should arrest Delilah's father. He said he didn't know he had a daughter. But there's a picture of Delilah in his house. Boy, he's some father, huh? On a rainy evening, Kaya came home and found that someone had eaten her chocolate bar. How rude! She asked her siblings who had done that. Laura said she had been working out in her room and she didn't even eat sweets. Sienna said she would never eat someone else's chocolate. Harley said that she'd been outside watering plants in the garden. She had just come home herself. Who lied? I'd say it was Harley. Hey, it was raining outside, so she didn't really need to water the plants. Esme was walking in the forest and guess what? Got lost. She tried to find her way back, but instead, she stumbled across a witch's house. She petted a black cat and asked the witch to take her home. But the witch had a riddle for Esme. I'll do my bad witch impression here. Look, there are ten pencils. They are in this order. One pencil, two pencils, and then three and four. Arrange them in reverse order, from four to one, by moving only one pencil. (laughs) Okay, enough of that. How can Esme do it? Esme should take the third pencil from the group of four and put it between the first pencil and the group of two. Okay, now I have a maze for you. It's amazing! (laughs) Can you find the way out? Yep, here it is. Help this mouse find its way to the cheese. It should go this way. Now, let's test how attentive you are. Look, here's a ball and three cups. I'll put the ball in here in the middle cup. Your task is to watch the ball and then tell me where it is. Ready? Go! So, where is the ball? Look, it's here! Did you get it? Now I have four cups, and I'll be moving faster. I put the ball right here. Watch it. Where do you think it is? It's in here. Would you make a good detective? I have some cases for you to crack. A young girl, Juniper, was spending her evening reading a book. She didn't eat anything. She didn't drink anything. Still, she suddenly felt bad and called the doctor. It turned out she got poisoned. But how? Juniper occasionally licked her fingers when she needed to turn a page. The poison was on the book's pages. 
Another girl, Sicily, was poisoned too and brought to the hospital. The examination showed that she hadn't eaten or drunk anything that day. Can you figure out what poisoned her? Sicily didn't eat anything, but look, she's wearing lipstick. That's what contains poison. The police just have to figure out who gave the girl this product. Miss Virginia Dell called the police and reported that her diamond necklace had been stolen from her room. Someone had broken in by smashing the window. A detective came to her house and saw that the window was indeed shattered and the room was a mess. Do you think someone really robbed the lady? Or was the whole thing staged? No one robbed Mrs. Dell. If the window had been broken from the outside, there would be glass on the floor. But the floor is clean, which means the window was broken from the inside, probably by Ms. Dell herself. During summer break, Penny's friends invited her to go camping. Penny didn't like such activities, but she also didn't want to admit that she'd rather stay at home watching TV. So she said that her parents had invited her to go to Greece with them. In reality, she stayed at home and binge-watched TV shows. Her family sent her some pictures from their vacation. Penny photoshopped herself into these photos and sent them to her friends. But when they saw the pictures, they realized that Penny wasn't in Greece. How did they figure it out? Penny is wearing the same outfit in every photo. It looks very suspicious. Mrs. Lawrence had three teenage daughters, Bonnie, Cassidy, and Sierra. They were all grounded and couldn't leave the house. Still, a neighbor saw one of the girls in the mall. Mrs. Lawrence came home and asked the girls what they'd been doing. Bonnie said she had been reading all day. Cassidy said that she had been painting in her room. Sierra said she'd spent the day in the garden and had just returned home. Which of the girls was in the mall? Both Cassidy and Sierra have some dirt on their shoes. That's okay for Sierra since she was in the garden. But Cassidy said she hadn't left her room, which means she lied. Yvette always wanted to get a cat, but her mom didn't allow her to have one. Once, the girl found a kitten in the street and brought it home. She knew her mom would make her take it to the shelter, so she decided to hide the animal. Yvette managed to keep it for two weeks without her mom noticing anything. But one morning, Yvette's mom walked into her daughter's room and realized a cat lived there. So, how did she figure it out? Yvette is wearing shorts, and her legs are all scratched. Ned works in a club. His job is to check people's ID cards and not to let inside anyone suspicious or people younger than 21. Take a look at these ID cards and help Ned decide who won't get into the party today. So what do you think about this woman here? She seems fine. Let her pass. Now take a look at this guy. What's your verdict? He lives in Wonderland. I've never heard of such a city. Let him go back to Wonderland. No clubbing tonight. What about this girl? What do you think? She seems okay. Here's another one. What would you say about her? What's your verdict? I'd say, pass. What about this young lady? The month and date of her birthday seem to be reversed. I'd say something is wrong with her ID. 
Okay, and how about this one? Yes or no? He's just 17 years old, definitely a no-no. Okay, how about something a bit harder? Rhett was driving to a neighboring city when one of his car tires went flat. He stopped to change it, but accidentally dropped all the four bolts used to fasten the wheel down the drain. Butterfingers. fingers. The guy didn't have any extra bolts to fix the wheel and to drive to the nearest service station. It was also a deserted road. No one traveled there, and Rhett's phone had run out of battery. What can this guy do to fix his car and get to the service station? Well, there's one solution. He can take one bolt from each of the other three wheels and use those three bolts to attach the fourth wheel. It must be enough to reach the place where he can get qualified help. Eve is taking part in a lottery. She has all the winning numbers written on a piece of paper. She can still participate and no one will stop her. But if Neva participates, she will have the same chances of winning as everyone else. Why? Nive just wrote down all the possible numbers that might be drawn. She still doesn't know which ones exactly will be chosen, so it doesn't affect her chances. Now imagine you're a bus driver. This bus driver is driving through a small town. There are seven passengers inside the bus. At the first stop, the driver picks up five more passengers and one person gets off the bus. At the second stop, the driver picks up eight more passengers and nine get off the bus. At the third stop, the rest of the passengers get off the bus. How old is the bus driver? Well, it seems confusing, but the answer is simple. As I said in the beginning, you are the bus driver. So, how old are you? Well, that old? Henry and Mia live together in New York. They wanted to run away from big city life and celebrate their anniversary in the wild. So the guys used a special online service and found three available options nearby. Bob offered his cozy treehouse in the woods for a reasonable price. Julia offered this fancy geodesic dome with all conveniences. It's a two-hour drive away from New York. And Crystal offered an old mansion that she'd inherited from her granny. Can you help the guys make the right choice? Take a closer look at the picture of the dome. It's located near the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which means this property is in Italy, and it can't be two hours away from New York. And Crystal's granny's ghost is still in the house, so Mia and Henry should choose the treehouse. The guys contacted Bob, booked the house, and hit the road. Mia is a famous blogger, so she decided to post all milestones of their journey in her stories. Can you spot any differences between these two pictures? Here they are. What about these two pictures? There are three differences. What can you say about these two? Can you see three differences? Here they are. While the guys were driving along a highway, someone threw a can of paint into their car. Mia and Henry stopped at the nearest car wash and interviewed four other drivers. Bill said, My truck has to be perfect. I'm going on a date this evening. Jack said, I'm going to meet my business partner at the airport. I want to leave a good impression. Lily said, Honestly, I don't need to have my car washed. I just stopped here to visit the restroom. Ryan said, my boss gave me this coupon so that I could wash my car for free. Who stained Henry and Mia's car? Lily. Her right hand is stained with the paint of the same color. And besides, 
She has a print of Mia's face on her t-shirt. She's definitely obsessed with her. The guys washed their car and continued on their journey. They had to choose one of these three roads to reach their destination. The first one went through toxic swamps. People often get lost in that area. The second path went near a river with creepy sirens. Their singing made everyone jump into the water. And a band of angry robbers was waiting on the third road. Which way should the guys opt for? The second one. They can close all the windows, turn some music on, and drive past the sirens very fast. Mia suggested visiting the farmer's market to buy some fresh produce for their romantic weekend. When they entered the marketplace, three sellers offered them apples, but only one deal was safe enough. Can you help the guys make the right choice? Seller number one offers very old apples. Take a look at the date on the box. They expired five years ago. Seller number three offers very beautiful apples. But pay attention to his assistant. She's putting shoe polish on the apples to make them look better. So, Mia and Henry should pick the second seller. Henry and Mia left the market and put all their purchases into the car. Suddenly, Henry realized that he'd left a bag with cabbage at the farmer's stall. He returned but couldn't find the bag. Henry questioned three people he saw nearby. Vera said, I only eat fruit, mister. See, I've got bananas and apples. Bella said, Yes, I saw your bag. The seller put the cabbage back on the shelf. And the seller said, I don't know what's going on here. I spent the last 10 minutes in the bathroom. Who's lying? Vera. She hid the cabbage under her elegant hat. Finally, the guys reached their destination. The treehouse is even better than in the photo, but can you spot anything weird in this picture? This raccoon is wearing sunglasses. The owner of the treehouse, Bob, lives in another country and the house is located 15 miles away from the village and other people. That's why Bob installed a special digital clock on the door. When Henry booked the property, Bob gave him a six-digit password. But unfortunately, Henry had lost it. Here's a hint. M80. Can you help the guy crack the code? These symbols are mirrored digits. Split them apart and you'll get the code 1133CC. The guys unlocked the door. But as soon as Mia entered the living room, she got very scared. She asked Henry to call the police. Why? The treehouse is in the middle of nowhere. Who lit the candles and the fire? The house was locked. Henry checked all the rooms, but found no clues. What about you? Any ideas who that could be? That roof window is open. Someone crawled inside the house before the guy's arrival. And now that someone is hiding under the bed, see? The guys called the police. Officers promised to arrive within an hour. Mia decided to take a shower. When she returned to the living room, she realized that Henry had disappeared. Mia searched the garden, then checked all the rooms in the house and returned to the garden again. But she failed to find any clues. Can you help her? The hot tub was open when Mia began her search, but now it's closed. Pretty suspicious. Mia was walking through the garden. Suddenly, a man in a mask popped out of nowhere and pushed her. Mia stepped on a trap and fell into a deep well. She yelled, Please help me out! No one answered, but Mia's phone pinged. The masked man offered her to play a game. 
Otherwise, she'd have to stay in the well forever. Here's the first riddle. I come in many different colors, and I get bigger when I'm full. I will float away if you don't tie me down, and I will make a loud sound if I break. What am I? Mia nailed it immediately. What about you? The correct answer is a balloon. Here's the second question. I can jump and I can climb. With many legs, I swing from tree to tree. I can make a house much bigger than me. What am I? Have you guessed? It's a spider. And the final question. I come out at night without being called. I'm lost in the day without being stolen. What am I? Can you help Mia? The correct answer is a star. A hatch opened at the bottom of the well. Mia went through it and got into a creepy basement. There, she found three ways to freedom, but every door hid some danger. A fire-breathing dragon was sleeping behind the first door. The corridor behind the second door was filled with high-voltage wires. And a vampire was waiting behind the third door. Suddenly, a message appeared on the screen of the girl's phone. Hurry up! Soon the walls will close in and smash you! Which way should Mia choose? She should wait until the walls are close enough so that she can scare the vampires away with this stake and go through the third door. When the police arrived at the treehouse, they found Mia and Henry at the porch. Henry had just woken up. The robbers had put sleeping pills in his coffee. The officers searched the area and found some clues. They concluded that the criminals were planning to leave the country by train. Unfortunately, no one knew what they looked like or how big the group was. So they stopped four suspicious people at the railway station and examined their baggage. Can you figure out who's innocent? Why would a bald man need shampoo? And this supposedly blind person has a flashlight. This guy is carrying three tubes of toothpaste, but no single toothbrush. It seems that only the third guy isn't a criminal. Three friends lived not far from one another and often met to drink some coffee together. Their names were Mr. Blue, Mr. Red, and Mr. White. One day, they noticed that under their coats, they were wearing t-shirts of different colors, red, blue, and white. Mr. Blue said, Hey, Mr. White, have you noticed that we're all wearing colors that are different from our actual names? The man wearing the white shirt answered, Wow, you're right! Can you figure out the shirt of which color each of them was wearing? Mr. Blue can only be wearing white or red, but we've already learned that someone else is wearing the white shirt. That means that Mr. Blue can only be wearing the red shirt, and Mr. White can only be wearing a blue or red shirt. And the red shirt is already taken, so Mr. White is wearing the blue shirt. Then Mr. Red is wearing the white shirt. Mia and Henry decided to spend the night in a hotel nearby. The manager said that they only had three free rooms. Can you help the guys choose the best option? This room doesn't have any doors. That's weird. And this room has a cracked mirror on the ceiling. It's too risky. The second option looks pretty safe and nice. The guys checked in and Henry asked Mia, well, where do you want to go now? She answered with this riddle. You used to visit me when you needed to know, but I've been lonely since the internet was born. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is a library. In the library, the guys met these four students. One of them is broke. Can you guess who?
Student number three. Her uniform is too large for her body. It must have belonged to her sister.